first today I'd like to introduce the people that are going to be presenting, the befrienders. Um, we have Esther Tatley and Maria Larson and Ruth Hagender and Jan Hansen and we have Paul on Zoom. So what is the Befriender program? It's um, a lay ministry. We have had the Befriender program at Prince of Peace for 28 years. It's a program that came out of St. Paul Wilder Foundation and Kathy Yoon organized it at our church. It's a lay ministry because a pastor, a congregational pastor, cannot possibly be walking with everybody in the congregation who is going through some big transition or crisis in their life. So that's where the Befriender program comes in. It's really a friendship program. Be a friend. The befrienders are trained to be confidential listeners. And that's why I'm going to tell my befriending story of a person who was one, one of my first befriending relationships. There was a couple who always sat in the front row at church. And then the man got developed Alzheimer's disease and he ended up um, moving to Lake Johanna Shores memory unit. And so Lil had to sit in the front row at worship by herself. And so anyway, I went and I sat with her so that she wouldn't have to be alone on Sundays. And then Lil couldn't drive the car anymore. So she needed transport to church. And then she needed transportation to kidney dialysis on Saturday mornings. And pretty soon, Lil moved to Lake Johanna home to the assisted living. And so after worship on Sunday morning, I would go over and um, with Lil, we would do the laundry and then we would wheel down to see her husband in memory care and then we would wheel down to the worship service chapel. Eventually, Lil had to move to the infirmary, and she wanted communion really badly. So I got Herb Tatley's pastor father's communion set, and we had communion regularly on, um, on visits. And throughout Lil's illness, she always asked, what's happening at Prince of Peace? She still felt commit, committed to her church. Connected, I should have said. So you're going to hear some befriending stories today, and Esther is going to begin to go first. I think I'm second. <laughs> I think so. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, I, um, I'm moving in a couple of years. I'm going to Lang Bloomston, the brand new one. And I've been, I've been sort of chatting about that around and about for a while because it's pretty exciting for me. It's a pretty big transition as well. And so I've been doing a lot of downsizing, a lot, and a lot of throwing out and giving away. However, <clears throat> I thought perhaps I could check, just to be sure, because I remembered we used to do mission minutes in church here, and I remembered doing a couple, and at least one or two were about befriending. Hey ho, I have the notes, and I'm not going to go through them again, but interestingly enough, um, <clears throat> much the same reflections I have now. And I think one of them was back in the day, 
years ago now, this would be, we felt like, we befrienders felt like uh, we were rather formalized. After all, we had received education on how to do this, how to be really wonderful listeners, and provide resources, perhaps, if that was uh, a good thing for, for a family. Anyway, we pretty much learned about reaching out. And reaching out is really, for me, the name of this particular ministry. And it's wonderful to do, and I think it's wonderful to receive as well. I have also received. And so, with the reaching out in mind, I'm going to share with you another format for befriending, which our church is involved with. And I'm not sure how many of you are quite aware, perhaps you are, it's a grief support series called Growing Through Loss. And we have now a new pile of these brochures out on the tract rack <coughs> that faces Kristen. And uh, help yourself if you have an interest or if you know anyone who might need or wish to be part of it. I have often gone to just the lecture part of Growing Through Loss. It's a series six, six times in a row in the spring. It's starting in April, April 21st this year. And it's at a church um, somewhere in this northern suburban area. There are now 18 churches. We are one of them, have been for a long, long time. And um, this is the spring series. There will be a fall series as well, another six, similar to what I'm going to share with you today. Pick up a brochure if you like. <clears throat> for instance, there's an education piece, which is about 45 minutes long. This time, the church involved is the one in New Brighton, uh, the Catholic Church there. It is the St. John the Baptist Catholic Church, and <clears throat> it will be there, and it starts at 6.45 to register. You just uh, sign in is all. It's, of course, free, and, um, and the, the speakers are quite special, and I, I have to say, worth, worth hearing. Uh, for instance, the first one will be Characteristics of Grief by Paul Johnson, who is a bereavement educator. Another is Families and Grief by Janice Winchester Nadeau, who has a doctorate in, um, well, she's a licensed psychologist, in, but her doctorate specifically is in marriage and family therapy. And I have gone to hear her more than once because she is that incredibly good. She is also the founder of growing through loss some years ago. Another one I'll just point out is the last uh, education piece is called Where is God in Our Suffering? And that is always the pastor of the church where these uh, sessions are held. So that's just a little bit of something about growing through loss that we are involved with in the way, in which way you're wondering, it's open to all of us, but somebody needs to go to the steering committee meeting twice a year. And so far that's been me. Um, it has been, as I mentioned, jointly sponsored by the North Suburban Grief Support Coalition of 18 churches, mighty special. Lots of good stuff goes on there. This is here for some reason. I think that's what I have to share. Maybe that's five minutes or so. Next. Maria? Let's see if this works. <laughs> In my opinion, perhaps yours too, befriending is a two-way street. At times we receive, at times we give. I relate to both. Perhaps you, like me, relate to both also. I will begin about receiving. Some of you know much of this story, but to some of you it will be new. I joined Prince of Peace in the late 1960s with my husband, Glenn, our three children, 
Greg, Todd, and Kari. Soon after, Greg was confirmed in this church and Kari and Todd followed later. As a diabetic, Glenn began having health issues and challenges in the mid-1980s. A kidney transplant in 1985, and we were supported and befriended by Prince of Peace pastors and many of you. When Glenn fell and broke his hip in December of 1991, we decided it was time to move from our Roseville home to a townhome being built in White Bear Lake, which was just a few blocks from where our son Greg and his wife and, and children lived. That move happened in November of 1992, and we were again befriended by many of you to help with that move. After Glenn's passing in 1995, Kay Johnson was my personal befriender. The ministry that she that was begun here in the early 1990s. Early in 2000, Anne called me and invited me to join the befriender ministry. I believe my first befriender was Vivian Lamb and her husband, Harold. A memorable visit I had with them happened in December of 2009. I decided it would be enjoyable to dress my three-year-old Guatemalan granddaughter as a Swedish Lucia to help deliver cookies to Vivian and Harold. A joyful time to remember, and I have a photo that proves that we just had a wonderful time. Here's my little Gu Guatemalan grandchild as Lucia delivering cookies to the Lamb family. And it's memorable. I also have memories of helping and befriending Val Hansen and Lois Carr. I, I lived in White Bear Lake and Val Hansen was living in Badness Heights. And so I oftentimes would bring her to church and also to our, our Lydia Circle. And uh, it was fun to have her with me because she was very sharp and could always have a good conversation. Um, actually, our uh, our Lydia Circle decided to have a memorial service for her at Dana Jacobson's home on November 9th of 2021. Another person that I befriended was Lois Carr, and she too was a good conversationalist. I enjoyed visiting her. She also lived in Vadness Heights, so it was easy for me to pick her up when she needed to go to the bank or something. And um, she was always cheerful, and I got more from her probably than she got from me because I enjoyed visiting with her. And I believe her memorial service was the last one that was held here at Prince of Peace in March of 2020. And we actually had lunch and the whole, what we did. And um, I would believe that uh, she was a member of Prince of Peace as a charter member, if I think that was right. And as I said at the beginning, Befriending is a two-way street, as it is often said, when you bring joy to the lives of others, <clears throat> you cannot keep it from yourself. Well, we've been hearing about Befrienders with a capital B. I think it's important to know that uh, there is an abundance of profound uh, befriending that happens beyond the uh, designated Befrienders. Uh, from my experience, Prince of Peace is a very caring community from uh, individuals and groups. And one example certainly is the prayer shawl um, ministry. Uh, this group of dedicated women have been knitting uh, prayer shawls for many years. And they have delivered um, literally hundreds of them to people at home in uh, hospitals and in care centers and uh, knit into these stitches are uh, prayers for hope, 
healing, consolation, certainly a blessing. Um, three years ago, just about this time, I was sitting in a bookstore coffee shop in Frisco, Colorado, and there was a lady sitting uh, across from me who was knitting. When she looked up, I asked her what she was making, and um, she said she was knitting a prayer shawl. I said, oh, I know about prayer shawls. <laughs> and so, um, you know, it led to an extended conversation about what a blessing this ministry is. Um, when my uh, husband was in the ICU at Regent's Hospital, he was gifted with a prayer shawl. He was um, so surprised that he was thought of and um, kind of awestruck by the whole thing. And that prayer shawl was um, really a, a blessing, not only spiritually, but physically as well, as you know, sometimes those hospital rooms are a little chilly, and uh, wrapping it around his shoulder was um, very comforting. Um, and now when I wrap myself in its warmth, I, uh, I like to remember and I think about him and kind of imagine his arms around me, and um, I smile, maybe shed a tear, thinking about um, what a blessing that uh, shawl was for both him and me, actually. Another very important ministry here at Prince of Peace is the baby blankets that are um, knit or crocheted by Kathy Yoon and uh, Gloria Rockney, presented to the babies on the day of their baptism. I hope when those babies get a little bit older, they will be told the stories of um, the special gift and blessing on the day of their baptism. Um, you know, all of you are really befrienders. Uh, you send cards, you make phone calls, you deliver soup, you write notes, you send flowers, um, you provide transportation, you visit, you listen, you pray. Um, one of my uh, personal stories, um, we talked about being on both sides of the befriending uh, program, uh, was uh, several years ago, about four months after my husband died, I fell and fractured my hip. Uh, it wasn't that I tripped on something or that I slipped on ice, I am a klutz. And so, um, after surgery, I was sent to Lingblomson for uh, rehab. And I guess the uh, story of my fall circulated pretty quickly because I began to receive a ton of cards, cheerful messages, wonderful. It was uh, so uplifting. Uh, I taped them on the wall all the way around, three sides of that room at Lingblomson. Uh, it was like a gallery, and uh, it was the first thing I saw when I woke in the morning and just cheered me so much. And when the aides or other staff would come into the room, they couldn't help but be impressed uh, by that um, evidence of caregiving. And maybe I imagined it, but I like to think that maybe it raised the bar just a tad uh, in terms of their caregiving when uh, they saw that evidence. <clears throat> and then when I got home, it was people from church who brought food and made uh, phone calls, made visitors to break up that uh, monotony of being alone. Um, and I could go on and on. I'll just mention a couple. Um, I remember a special uh, manicotti casserole delivered by Don Oberdorfer famous chef that he was. Um, then there was the uh, railing installed in my stairway by Denny Niebling uh, so that I wouldn't have to go up and down the steps on my bum. Um, and then there were the taxi rides by uh, Jim Johnson, who took me to appointments and um, events until I was able to drive the car myself. So, as you mentioned, I've been on both sides of the befriending. 
Um, and it's also uh, possible to have fun being a befriender. Uh, it was uh, the Christmas just before the pandemic. My son and his family came home from England to spend the holidays, and uh, also his mother-in-law came up from Florida. So, uh, and we had a wonderful week of celebrating. And on Christmas Day, before our uh, festive dinner, I thought it would be fun to go caroling. Maybe bring a little bit of cheer to some people who hadn't been able to be at a concert or a Christmas program. Um, I have a closet full of costumes. And so I talked this little group of 10 into dressing uh, like English carolers, you know, the kind you see on Christmas cards with the top hats and the bonnets and the capes. And of course, my two teenage uh, grandsons rolled their eyes and thought, oh no. Uh, but they agreed. And uh, so we um, managed to. Um, dress ourselves as English carolers. Fortunately, in that little group of 10, uh, we were able to cover all four voice parts. And so with a pitch pipe and um, our uh, little bit of rehearsal, we went off to Ling Blomson, and then we went to the Heritage, and then to Johanna Shores. And um, it was, you know, some of the people we sang to smiled, some hummed or sang along, um, a few clapped, a few threw a kiss, some wanted us to stay a bit longer. Uh, we just hope that we uh, were able to bring a little cheer to uh, quite a lot of people, but for us, it was definitely the highlight of our day. And so um, it's you know, it was kind of proof that there are many different ways that we can be befrienders. Soren uh, Kierkegaard said, the highest and most beautiful things in life are not to be heard about, are not to be read about, but to be lived. That's what befriending is all about. It's been neat to hear these stories from the befrienders. Now we're going to... It's been nice to... That's the problem. <laughs> it's been nice to hear the stories from the befrienders. And now we're going to hear from Paul Sponheim, who has been the um, recipient of befriending. I think Ruth Hagender first had Nell as a befriendee, and then she kind of grew into Paul. So Paul, are you there? I am here. I'm here. There seems, there to, seems be to be a little a delay. Little delay. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try it. Try it. Yes, yes uh, I have been. I have been Befriended. I don't know why there is that delay. Can you hear me? Okay. Well, well. That's that's uh, uh, I I would I would emphasize a particular dimension of this this period. Period. Um, um, the, the uh, I'll use I'll my, use old, my old, example. old example. Uh, 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 I could go I back, could go back to, to uh, uh, the wonderful, wonderful ministry that, that uh, Ruth, uh, Ruth, Ruth Hagen offered, offered to, to Nell, Nell uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, many years. Many years really. Uh, I think uh, I think how, how she drove Nell to many 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 times. But I'll but pick up uh, uh, my own my situation, own situation. Uh, uh, and and I, I, I would use I would the use image of a shrinking circle, circle 
I, I, uh, I'm talking I'm about talking the, about uh, the uh, sense, uh, sense of isolation, isolation that, that has, has been, been prominent, prominent in my life. In my life. Um, um, in, in, I, I retired in the year 2000, thousand, another, another eight eight years, 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 and then, and then uh, uh, retired all together. together. And, um, um, then, then before, before we knew it, we knew it uh, 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 the isolation, the isolation of the pandemic, pandemic was, was upon us. Upon us. Uh, um, and, and, uh, uh, the circle, the circle shrinks, shrinks, uh, uh, my, my uh, wife my Will died, died uh, her, uh, her anniversary, anniversary death, death is coming up coming now. now. She died, she died on, on the 17th of March, March. Uh, uh, this coming this Thursday. Thursday. Uh, uh, I received, I received much trending, trending, uh, uh, and Ruth has been the evidence of that in many, 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 many ways. Many ways. Uh, uh, it continues, it continues. The, the, shrink, shrink, the shrinking, the shrinking of, the of the circle. Uh, uh, in, the, in the week before, week before Christmas, Christmas, this past Christmas, past Christmas uh, I lost, I lost uh, the, the, and Paul Erdahl in, uh, in, uh, in, one, in one week. Uh, the uh, circle the shrink. shrink. Uh, uh, I, I think I, I the underestimate how, how essential, essential the relationships, relationships are. are. Uh, they uh, are, are stitched in many ways, ways of our of humanity. Our humanity. So, so as, as you lose the connection, connection as the person is lost, 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 you, you, uh, uh, you uh, have you a have sense of diminish, diminishment. The, 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 the circle is the circle, circle of your, of your relationship. relationship. And I think and that's, that's something that the friendly ministry addresses. addresses. Uh, uh, I, was I was looking, looking at, at the, the uh, web page and, and the description of the, the friendly ministry. Uh, uh, the verbs that, that are used are you there, there. Befrienders. Befrienders. Listen, listen, support, support encourage, encourage, accept, accept care, care, and share. And share. Now that's, now that's, that's a, a tremendous, tremendous uh, list, uh, list of, of six, six verbs. verbs. And, I've, and I've, I've, I've experienced that. 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 I, know that I know that my wife, my wife received uh, uh, the action, the action of all, of six, all six verbs. verbs. I would, I would want to add, to add one other one other verb. Uh, that uh, verb that would be the be verb be. 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 Uh, uh, I, I, it it is striking, striking, strike you as you as uh, unusual, uh, unusual, but uh, it helps it me helps a lot, a lot to uh, uh, simply uh, know that there is there another is person, person out there, out there who cares, who cares about, about my life. My life. Who is, who is interested in, in my in life? My life. Uh, uh, maybe it'll maybe be a point of maybe, maybe it'll be a flower. Maybe it'll be a birthday card. card. Maybe it maybe will be, be a, a greeting on a particular sad anniversary. But there's but someone there's out there for whom my life matters, who cares about my well being. And, uh, and in doing uh, that, the, uh, the Befriender Ministry, ministry uh, is, uh, is a, a very, very efficacious extension, extension of, of the ministry, the ministry of, of our church. Our church. So, so uh, uh, I know I'm I know speaking I'm on behalf of, of another 20, 20 people who are, who are home, home and, and, and who are, who are receiving. receiving uh, the uh, gifts the gift and, and, and uh, attention uh, and care, and care that, that uh, uh, the vendors uh, offer. offer. So, so on behalf, on behalf of, of those, those other people, other people and, and certainly, certainly on my on own, my behalf, own behalf, behalf, I say, I say many things. Just talk to Narsk. 
Many thanks thank for, for the beautiful, beautiful gifts gift of the Befriender Friend 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 Friend. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> Uh, when I was asked to be part of today's forum, the first thing that I did was try to figure out how I would, word, how I would define the word befriender. It doesn't, the, the, the words being kind came to me. It doesn't take much to smile at someone and ask them how their day is going. I personally know what a smile from someone does for me, especially when I'm going through a hard day. Growing up as a child, I often heard my mom say, in a world where you can be anything, be kind. I have been privileged to be a befri on the Befriender team for numerous years and had the have had the opportunity to get to know many of our members, especially the senior population. I have cherished the relationships that were built and I have considered all of them to be my friends. However, there is a difficult side of being a befriender. It is really hard to say goodbye to our special friends when they pass away, as has happened many times in this congregation, especially over this past two years when we lost 21 members. Rather than talk about my individual befriendies, I have chosen a couple personal stories that I would like to share about how this program has affected me. The first story is about a beautiful lady named Kay Johnson. Kay was in charge of the befriending team at a time when I was going through a most difficult time in my life. Kay called me and said that even though I had a great deal of friends who were helping me out, the befriender team wanted to be there for me also. She asked me to choose someone from the team and I chose her. Shortly after that, Jim and Kay decided to take me up to their lake home for a long weekend just to get away from my crisis I was going under, going through. What an incredible gift that was. Kay continued to be there for me for months until my situation improved. We became long-lasting friends and I will never forget the kindness that was shown to me by Kay and Jim and so many, many others in this church community. At Prince of Peace, I see many people doing tasks for others behind the scenes. They are befriending. Members have made winter hats for children in need, prayer shawls for those going through difficult times, blankets for newly baptized babies, tie blankets for people who need warmth during the winter months, sandwiches for those who are in need of food, special homemade cards, and the list goes on and on and on. This is being done by the kindness of members who are taking care of others in need. Peggy Lee saw my brother's name on the prayer shawl and called me to see if she could make a prayer shawl for him. I was so touched that she wanted to do something like that for Denny, who is dealing with a very difficult diagnosis. She made the shawl and he was absolutely overwhelmed with gratitude that a perfect stranger would do something like that for him. He even decided to wear the shawl to a family get together to show others what Peggy had done. He sent her a thank you note and, asks, and often asks me, how is Peggy doing? He hopes to be able to meet her in person when COVID calms down. Years ago, a prayer shawl was given to my mom when she had one of her numerous surgeries. She was thrilled to receive it and always kept it on her special chair. When she passed away, my dad transferred that prayer shawl to his chair and he kept it there until the day he joined my mom in heaven. That 25-year-old shawl, shawl is now on the back of my chair where it gives me comfort and many warm memories of my parents. Another highlight 
for me is that my friend Ruth Hagender and I decided to join forces several years ago in connection with the Befriender team. We decided to start a program called, that, or that we named Coffee on Wheels. We bring coffee, treats, and conversation to many of our senior members. Sometimes we have one guest, and other times we have several who live in the same senior residence. If at all possible, we also like to include their assigned befriender. To visit with these folks and see their smiles, laughter, um, and hear about their careers and their memories has been a true gift for Ruth and I. COVID has put a halt to this program for a while, but we so look forward to the continuation of these heartwarming visits. I would like to share this reading because I think it explains what this team and, our, and I are talking about this morning. It's entitled, Being Kind Says a Lot. When you're kind, it says a lot without uttering a single sound, a smile, a friendly nod, an unexpected gift shows goodness in the heart abounds. An encouraging note, going the extra mile, a card of good wishes, and a caring touch makes life seem so sunny and worthwhile, as others too feel loved so very much. Happiness shines when we're reaching out to others in deep need. It lifts our spirit, heart, and soul when we plant a kindness seed. If we offer a helping hand along life's way, it can paint a rainbow in a sky of stormy blue. Just maybe we'll see another prosper because of a simple deed that we could do. Thank you. Thank you to the four befrienders who shared their stories today, and to Paul who shared his story. Um, we do have 14 befrienders at church now. Um, you can tell that there's five of us who are a little bit old, <laughs> and there's no men. So what we need is our younger Befriending, and we need men to be befriending. We have 21 homebound people on our list, and some of them have, have befrienders, and some of them don't. So we do need some support from more people. So thank you for being here today. Take home your handout and remember the befriender program. On one side, it's if you um, want to be a befriender, you can call Maria Larson or I. We're the coordinators of the program. And if you um, need a befriender, call Debbie Jorgens. And Debbie, would you just kind of raise your hand back there in case we don't know? We are so happy to have a new congregational um, care visitation person, and Debbie has been really hard at work. So we're glad to have you here, Debbie. So have a good week. It's St. Patrick's Day. Enjoy the green. Thank you.